Hi, everybody, and welcome to the TGIF Business Networking Hangout. I'm your host, Melani McDonald, and today we have a really great episode for you. We're going to be discussing collaboration and team building. We have two great guests. We have Jessica Duell and Jim Alt, and I'm going to begin with letting them introduce themselves to you. Okay, Jim, your microphone is on, so you get to go first. Oh, very good. Microphone's on. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this nice Friday episode. We're going to talk about some good things, and what I do is help people build that team or that collaboration. And one of the important parts is what do you do with things that you record, such as video? How do you get them out there in a meaningful fashion? And I've spent a lot of time studying how Google does it and YouTube. So hopefully when we talk today, some of that will come to play and we'll have some good tips. Awesome. Thank you so much. Jessica, please introduce yourself. Hello. This is such a great day. Thank you, Melani, for having me join you and Jim. And it's exciting that John is here, too. And look who's hiding in the audience. And um, I see you, Lee. We were having a conversation online earlier today. So glad you're here. And I'm excited because this is something that is so near and dear to my heart. Red Direction is a consulting firm that I have built to help businesses, small and medium-sized businesses, learn about consistency in voice. And part of that consistency in voice translates over to the people side and how do we collaborate, you know, cross collaboration across departments and companies in addition to how do we collaborate with like-minded people in our industry or in other industries. And that actually is one of the things that I love about Infusion Principle, which is my new project, because we get to spend so much time focusing on the people side of things and the importance of people and how to really relish the amazing sparkle that every single person brings to a project. Oh, nice. And I see your little sparkles in your lower third there to keep that concept <laughs> alive. Love it. John, thank you for joining us today. Please give yourself an introduction. I'm John Jerkowitz. I'm a career development uh, coach and consultant, and I primarily grew up in the human resource industry and about two years ago decided that uh, the new future of human resources lies in personal branding and, uh, to be short and succinct, a lot of what Jess just shared, a lot of the cross-departmental collaboration, a lot of the things that... Um, just look at this hangout this morning. You've got four people from all over the United States sharing thoughts, ideas with the entire world. Now imagine taking that down onto a very small micro level and teaching people how to do that. So I work with people on branding and I work with them on career development. Kind of finding that right spot for them to grow and then share what they have. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great introduction. Nice TG uh, show you had, not TGIF. You don't do TGIF, I do. <laughs> <laughs> nice hangout you had last night. I look forward to being on it next week. And I'm your host, Melani McDonald. I'm a brand identity and outreach strategy consultant. I help people, small businesses and solopreneurs, identify who their target audiences are, figure out what they want their brand and their reputation to be, and how to earn it and nurture it and promote it. What a great show. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is collaboration. I'm a big fan of collaborations. I've had a lot of great things happen in projects that I've worked on that were collaborations between multiple agencies when I worked at the Water District and on my own as a solopreneur. And what I love about collaborations is that a, you get to meet some really wonderful people with a lot of skills and talents that are just so admirable and that will inspire you. And you keep each other inspired. And B, everybody brings their own resources and talents and skills to the mix so that your project can really benefit from a variety of resources brought to the table by all the different people who are collaborating on it. So I'm going to start with our guests and ask them to tell us a little bit about a project that they're working on that is a collaboration and what they started with how they got into it, you know, how they got started with it, what attracted 
them to it and what they love best about their collaboration. Jessica, let's start with you. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about what is your one of your projects that you're collaborating on and what attracted you to it to begin with and then what are the you know, wonderful things that you love about what everybody's bringing to the table? What are the benefits? Okay, so there are the people that I am fortunate to know because of this wonderful thing called the internet and even more so because of this great thing where we get to have video and we get to talk to each other really brings out an amazing amount of um, connection that maybe I would not have connected with the same people just via email or just through conversation that because I don't get to know them in the same way so all of the collaboration projects that I in, enjoy and love the most are the ones where we get to use whether it's Skype or Hangouts or WebEx or, or whatever some sort of video conferencing tool to help with that the women in business today program is something that I know is is exciting and you're a great big fan of that Milani yes um, I am <laughs> and that was an idea that Melanie Hall had and Melanie Hall was like how do I do this and what do I want this to be and so she had seen me on the Jess and Scott show and she had seen me on other hangouts on air around Google Plus and reached out and said you know I kind of have this idea and so we met and we brainstormed and before we knew it we were like okay we even had a list of people to reach out and talk to and from that list of people due to you know availability and interest and everything what we did we we have a great team of four women that bring neat ideas and our own experiences around a topic every single week to uh, for and it's just a 30 minute show it's a great 30 minute watch and I love how our our ages are different our experiences in life are extremely different our personalities are different although I will tell you I'm the only extrovert on the show there are three introverts and then me <laughs> so what um, is that like I have to tell you it's um it's really cool because I love the fact that they show up every week and that they have these great things to say and that they're willing to share their passion about things so I've learned a lot about what an introverted personality how the introverted part of personality actually contributes to a world approach and a world view and it is an amazing an amazing compliment to the world of an extrovert now you bring up an interesting topic with the introverts and extroverts. Do you, as the only extrovert, find that when you are on camera, when you're broadcasting, do you have to pull stuff out of them? Are they a little more shy or hesitant? Or you know, do you find that you sort of assume the leadership position a little bit more because you're the extrovert? Um, I would say that being an extrovert for me it's easy for me to fill space and it's not necessarily easy for an introvert to fill space so as, when we started I worked really hard to take a step back so that I wasn't the center of attention because it's easy for me as an extrovert to go yeah okay I'm here shine a light on me and let's go um, and it really is about the voices of an entire community it's the vo the four of our voices that bring out and resonate with our entire audience and so I had to work on some skills for me of being able to wait and and let that space be so that they felt like it was their turn to talk and now that we've been doing this um, you know we've been doing this just since the beginning of the year we're much more comfortable with each other and the more we do it the more comfortable we are and we're able to have a little bit more of a dialogue where they're like get out of the way Jess get out of the way Jess it's awesome <laughs> I've always thought that, or it's been my experience that I think one of the most important jobs of an extrovert in a team effort is to ensure that the introverts on the team have their space to share, yeah. to use their extroverted, their their as you said, their ease of filling in to make sure that the introverts feel comfortable and that they have their space to share because they always have so much to add. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 
Let's go to you now. Tell us a little bit about one of your collaborative projects. How did you get interested in it, and how did you find your other team members? What drew you to it? Well, for me, a lot of it's been exposing myself to a lot of new things and then being a little bit timid, but once you get used to it, now you get to interact with people, and they give me the inspiration or ideas. I communicate, and then they invite me in if it you know, is applicable. If my skill set does that kind of thing, says, hey, Jim, we need you in here. That doesn't happen all the time. So pushing yourself into a team doesn't necessarily work. It's finding a good match where you feel comfortable and feel like you can contribute. And then when I started a couple of my own, I said, I'm looking for certain people. Now, it could be that just like just like John has said, when you're out there in the big bad world, you're going to find a lot of people that just don't measure up. They don't fit. And how do you know that? Well, you do a little bit of trial. And I think that's where collaboration comes in. If you have four people, three of them are talking about you. And you don't get to hear that part. They're collaborating and you're not part of that little tiny conversation going, well, is he fast enough? Good enough? Is he showing up? Does he contribute? Is he, do we want to keep him? You know, these things go on and you go, but I have confidence. I'm building my confidence so I can be the team member that does measure up. So the team I'm on now works very well because we've all been there enough times. We've rehearsed it. So I, I encourage people to think about what are you doing to contribute and then what are you learning so you can become a better team member. And if you focus on that, some of the other niggly problems just go away. You know, so that's really interesting, and I love that you brought up that aspect of personal development by being part of a team and growth right. and being part of a team. I had, had not even thought of that. And you're right. You do have to have the confidence to hold yourself in as part of that team. So that's a great point, Jim. Thank you. And, yeah. and so for you, is it as much the people that are the draw over the project? Well, put it this way. If you're trying to plan a long-term project, you better form a pretty strong team that can go the distance and go through the modifications. If it's a short-term project to launch something and then you're all going to go your separate ways, that's a different kind of team. So when you come into a, a, a project where there's no real money, you're just trying to do things to learn, that you don't nobody has skin in the game and so they have a different attitude but when there's money to be made and somebody isn't quite measuring up or handling their part of it now the measurement becomes more critical and people get a little more shall we say short term in their thinking going you better get your game together and that's where the confidence comes in and one of my projects is people centric that means it depends on the people not a product that's going to be better than anybody else's so we're not building a better mousetrap, we're building a better team. That's a great point. I, I've had uh, an experience like that with a project that I'm working with a team on right now. And there's three team members in total. And two of us have been together since the beginning. The third one is the third round of the third team member, where we had somebody else that we started with and they missed a couple of meetings and we were very forgiving okay you know life happens that's cool but it just kept happening too much and so we had to worry about the future when we take this product out to market and we have clients is this person going to miss our meetings so we found a different third person and then we had the same problem or challenge with that person as well and now we have our permanent third person who comes to our meetings regularly and contributes and who we all get along with really well on a personality level, on a personal basis. And one of us is very, very introverted. The other two are sort of semi, we're half extroverted and half introverted, but it's all a really good mix in the collaboration. So I really agree that you have to be able to work together on a variety of levels, both in the type of work you do, in the work ethics that you exhibit, and also on your personal relationship level. John, thanks for joining us today. Do you have anything that you would like to add to this discussion? Do you have a collaborative project that you are working on that, that you would like to tell us about? 
just a just a couple comments Jessica I feel your pain okay because I'm a terminal extrovert and uh, sometimes I have to sit on my hands okay but the one thing I found that works for me real real well in a collaborative environment is that I give myself the busy work to do so the other folks who may not be as extroverted can kind of feel comfortable coming forward to shine but I it, it's 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 real difficult for me sometimes not to hijack the what whether it's a hangout or whether it's a a, a team meeting that I'm involved in um, I do a lot of collaborative work and it, it's kind of interesting because one of the things that's helped me in my personal development is going from being that guy that's out front saying come on and follow me to being that person that says I'm a conduit to other people so um, for example I just started working with somebody through Google Plus this morning um, and they kind of gave me a laundry list of things they'd like to accomplish and while they're doing that I'm writing notes as to who else can I pull into this to help them reach their goals and objectives I think it's kinda interesting I'm old enough that I was present at the creation of this whole team phenomenon back in the early 80s and I think it's morphed into a lot of different things um, project I'm working on that I'm real excited about well I'll let you know next week if I'm still real excited about it but <laughs> I was asked locally we have a small university here and they've chosen six students to put through an entrepreneurial process where they're actually bringing coaches and consultants in to spend um, a day with them and kind of talk about here's what you need to do here's what you not don't need to do and I know all the people on the team and it's kind of interesting as we've run into one another it's well who do you think's gonna head this thing up and everybody I've talked to is gone <laughs> not me okay so um, you know I think if you're of a certain generation you were raised on competition and so this crossover this this becoming a conduit to collaborating I think is really really important so that that's kind of where I'm at. I like your comment about in a certain generation you're raised on competition, and I have to say, I don't want to. I hate to bring gender into the mix, but I've got to do it because it's been my actual experience. And again, this goes back to when I was working at a public agency before I went out on my own. And in that public agency, when you're working on a project for the community you often collaborate with other public agencies and government entities in the community. And I worked on a few different collaborative projects. Now the projects that were made up mostly of women, I have to say there was very little ego involved, there was very little competition, there was a lot of mutual support and uplifting type of stuff. We were more about supporting each other and saying how awesome you are and how great the other people were and we got so much accomplished. We really created this really wonderful educational program that is still six years later going strong. Whereas some of the other projects that had a mix of women and men, sometimes <laughs> the women, we would get together after the meeting and just kind of shake our heads because the men spent so much time kind of pissing on each other and trying to be the top dog that we didn't get as much accomplished. So I'd kind of like to hear from the panel, you know, I don't want to have gender bias, but it, I swear it was my actual experience. And what are your thoughts on this, and have you had any similar experiences? And the other thing that I thought was interesting was what Jessica said about her, collaborat her collaborations using virtual tools and video conferencing. And how many collaborative projects have you had that were on location, in person, within your locale, 
And do you find a difference between the in-person collaborative efforts and the virtual collaborative efforts? So go ahead and address either one of those you want to address first, Jessica. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start with the experience piece. And when I was, man, I can't believe this, when I was 21, I sold my first company. And I needed to travel and I needed to show up and go to these meetings with all, you know, so here I am, I'm this new director, they just acquired my company, I would come hang out with the VPs and the CEO and all of, you know, all of the acronyms and I had such a good time and, and realistically what I ended up feeling was that I didn't quite belong and I couldn't figure it out and so finally I turned inward, which is actually kind of hard for me to do, so I was able to turn inward and, and just noodle on that. It probably took me six months of just think, watching and observing and this is actually where some of my listening skills and my observation skills really came out and started to shine and be honed. Because the more I watched, I didn't see competition as much as I saw the people that showed up, did what they said they were going to do, did it at or before when they said they were going to have it done, they automatically earned respect. And as soon as I started doing that, the attitudes around me changed. I could still be this uplifting person. I still was able to encourage teamwork. But the division that I was in, involved with, um, you know, I had, I had, what were the, probably six, at, at, at the height of it, there were six brands that I helped acquire and bring in and I ran for this company. And so the whole goal for me was, well, I was the conduit between the senior management as part of the senior management and everybody else. So my job was to, how do I uplift you guys, remove the obstacles, make things happen. And that's actually really part of being, one, a leader, and two, a collaborator, especially on small projects today, is because if we all help remove obstacles for each other, we are going to make much, much more progress than if we're all doing our own thing and trying to piece something together at the end, is, is my experience. So I think it's it's all about the confidence in self and can what what are the people around you what gets those people a different response than the what am I not doing that other people are to get that response and then does that sit right with me and is is that something that I can be is it something that's actually in me and I don't realize that I have that already and it's a little bit of a self discovery process to be able to participate at that level or in a different way that's great. I love what you said about being the conduit and basically taking care of your own part that you're, you're the role you're going to play and that gets you the respect. And actually before I go to Jim, I do want to say that my experience in my online collaborations has been very different than the one that I spoke about because I've met Jim and I've met John. I get along wonderfully with both of them. I never see I've worked with Jim on a lot of things or spent a lot of time in hangouts with him. I never see him pissing on anybody or trying to be top dog. <laughs> He's always been very, very supportive and helpful. And I think part of that is that with the virtual collaborations, we have more of a choice of who we choose to work with, whereas sometimes in a work situation, locally, especially if you're in a regular job, you just have to collaborate with the other people that are there that you're working with and you have to learn how to deal with those communication styles. And that's where we're going to go in the second half of this discussion is the team building and we'll address some of those issues. Jim, go yeah. ahead and tell us what okay. are I'm going to stay away from certain topics just because I'm the guy and I don't want to have that <laughs> on YouTube forever. The, the thing I'm going to switch to is my comfort zone, I guess, but I'm, I'm, I'm usually the technical guy. I've always been gravitated gravitated toward this, Jim, you understand this stuff, you you take on this job, you take on that job, and I can do it, and I'm willing to do it, and so it's great. But I get pigeonholed a little bit over here in this one little group saying, but this is technical, and you know how to do it, and we don't have to learn it, do we? And I, well, no. But then that's all I get to do is the technical stuff. And where it leads to is, remember that, especially in companies like you mentioned, Melani, and the reason we maybe like being the entrepreneur, solopreneur, whatever the freedom kind of thing is, a lot of people in companies, when you walk in the door and it's the receptionist or the manager over here or the person that's going to help you because of the clerk, they somehow probably don't like the way they've been treated. And 
people respond to how they've been treated. And when you get a collaboration team together, you're inheriting people's, gee, I don't like my job, or gee, I don't like what's going on, and how they're being treated really does affect their attitude. And when you get a collaboration going, you need to work on how am I treating the other people and how are they treating me? Do I really want to work for that person? Do I really want to show up Tuesday morning with a cup of coffee early because they're an early riser and if it's late in the day, they're going to be a little bit grouchy? Well, saying you're grouchy, ha, 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 isn't an excuse. Get rid of the grouchy mood. These are your team. These are your collaborators. Treat them with a certain level of respect and then a high regard until they disprove otherwise. But don't come at them with this, you better prove you're worthy kind of thing. And it's like, well, wait a minute, why do you say that? So how you're treated by your collaborators, turn the mirror around and say, I got to look in that mirror myself. How am I treating my collaborators myself? Am I always helpful? Do I always find solutions or willing to take blame that yeah I was I was behind on this part or I had this great idea it didn't pan out and now we're behind so that's the part that I see where people need to take responsibility for themselves but also look at how are the collaborators treating each other because they're used to being treated poorly wherever they go wow that is such an astute observation and great advice Jim thank you so much you have so much more to offer than just the technical stuff. You've just proven oh, it. Right I, know. There. <laughs> I know. I I can do computer code. I can do yeah, enough. Right. I'm going to check our Q and A real quick and see if anybody's got any questions here. Okay, Melanie. Melanie Hall. Hi, Melanie. She says, "I wonder if women of a certain generation had less of an ego trip because the culture was." that women wouldn't get the credit for great ideas and implementations anyway, so why let that stop the good work? Sacrifice ego for the overall good. Hmm. That is interesting and yeah, I wonder if, because I think that it, it is generational to some degree. I don't see it happening as much with the younger work groups as I did with the older ones. And then she says, oh, just saying I'm here, okay. Awesome, and Brian Rowley is here as well. Hi, Brian, and Christine L. Bowen. Greetings, I'm unable to view the HOA from the event page. Oh, no. Well, I, I will, let's see. Well, if you go to the event page, in the details box on the right, there's links, and you can click on that, and there will be a YouTube link. I'm going to post it into the comments here. So anybody who is having problems watching it on the event page, I will post the link for the YouTube page, and you can watch it there. You know, so, may may I loved what Melanie said, and may I comment on that? Yes, please do. Awesome. I would say too that you know part of collaboration is really being true to yourself. And so always supporting other people is really good, but we can't forget to for support ourselves in the process because if we're not taking care of ourselves, how can we take care of the rest of our team or our collaborators or our, you know, anybody that we're working with on any project? And there's only so much of us to go around, and if we're not taking care of us, we forget how much we have to go around. Great, great. Thank you so much. That's uh, say thank you to Melanie again for a great question. And thanks, Jess, for your take on that. John, I want to go to you for a minute because I saw you when I was relating my own experience with the, the gender stuff. You were kind of really chuckling there. <laughs> I'm in agreement, okay? Uh, so have you, you have had this similar experience? or And, and yeah. do you find that it's generational as well? I'm, I'm going to try to codify this so it comes out in three or four sentences because to me this could be a whole series of hangouts for a year. <laughs> um, I deal with a number of females under the age of 35 both individually and collectively and the very issue you were talking about um, that when they collaborate with one another things get done however when they walk into an environment where the genders are mixed very often they feel that they're not being taken seriously 
or they're kind of given the, oh, honey, would you go make coffee sort of routine that, that was real prevalent 25, 30 years ago. So I think that here we have all this wonderful technology, and there's, and I may be underestimating by saying this, literally just a handful of people in the world. Sorry, Tyson. Stop, stop, stop. Is this the dance part? <laughs> Where's the bucket of water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, oh my gosh, I forgot to turn my iPad off and it had some alarm or other going. So Go there's, I see a lot of a, a lot of females in the situation that you're talking about and they don't know about you and they don't know about Jessica and they don't know about a lot of other people because the word hasn't mushroomed that this environment is here and that they don't have to walk down the street and have a cup of coffee at Starbucks with somebody that they can go to a hangout finally just the thing I was chuckling about is before I got into human resources I supervised about 70 predominantly males for a Fortune 5 company in an operations vein. And here's what I found when most males work together. We revert to being juniors in high school. So the people that are athletic hang around with the athletic people. The people that are intelligent hang around with the intelligent people. And then us poor nerds get tripped going down the stairs. Now, you enter a female into that environment. And we do the same thing. We put the label that we had because by nature, men are competitive. So you put it into a collaborative environment. Jessica said something that I thought was really great about turning inward. Because in the final analysis, collaboration works when we're balanced. And balance as individuals is hard work. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for sharing your, your own insights and observations and experiences and working with people like that. Right. But I do find it's way easier to work on other people than myself. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, as we segue into the team building part of it, actually, I want to address something that you said, Jim, and you talked about how especially in those work group situations through having a job, people bring all that baggage with them and they have these preconceived issues that they've already been dealing with at their jobs. And I think that there's a lot to that. I see this in particularly, you mentioned you, you get pigeonholed into the IT stuff, but I saw this a lot with uh, one place where I worked and the IT guy there. And I ended up having to change my own style. Now, I didn't realize that I was not being conscientious of him. I would say, hey, when you have a chance, could you please check this issue out that I'm having with my computer? And I thought, well, that doesn't sound demanding. That sounds OK. And what I found out later through listening to him was that a lot of people in the upper management, you know, if they didn't know how to do something on their computer and it was something really minor, that they could just look it up real quick. They would like freak out and they would call him. They would want him to come right away and fix their computer when there wasn't really anything wrong with it. And he was in the middle of some big, huge IT project that any little mistake could cause something major to happen. And it was driving him crazy. And so after that discussion, when I sent a request to him, I would not do it in person because it wasn't taking attention away from whatever job he was working on. I would send him an email and I would say, first, give him credit. I know you're really busy and I know you're working on really important things. So this is just a when you have time. Here's my issue. Here's what I've already done. Here's where I've tried to look up and the answers that I found. So when you have time and when you can get to it, please help me. After that, his sort of attitude towards me changed dramatically because I was I was not, you know, acting like he wasn't doing anything important. I was making sure that 
he knew that I knew that he was doing something important and that this was just whenever he had time to get around to it. So those communication styles I think are very important. The tip of just when you approach somebody and you first, before you do anything else, give them some kind of credit. I think you're doing a really great job on this and I love what you're doing. When you have a chance, could I please, here's the issue I'm having. Really did make a lot of difference for me in my own team building skills and collaborations where now we feel like, okay, everybody is supportive of one another and so when we get those requests for help or for something that we need to work on, they come a lot more easily. Jim, since you brought that up, let's have you address that first. Well, most people feel like no matter how good they are, there's always something they're deficient in. And therefore, they come at this with a, I don't want to let people know about it, or I want to shovel that off to somebody else, like, I'm not a good note taker. And if I take notes and can't find them, then I've, I've, I'm really going to screw up and everybody's going to see that. So they have a little bit of insecurity that they want to either cover up or shove off into something else. Yet, they should address it, and you should help them with that. So now you talk about team building versus collaboration. Team building means you'd all like to get stronger and not have to depend on the one person who knows how to run the computer or turn it on or fix it. Because when they're not around, oh my gosh. So it's the idea of are you amenable to learning other things that help the other people or do you want to stick to just your own stuff you know and that's it. And when you form those silos, as I call them, you want to stay in your silo, that isn't really team building because you're comfortable there and you feel like that's where you're not going to get discovered to be you know, deficient and behind the learning curve. A lot of people don't like reading complex material. But in team building, sometimes that's what's required. You've got to learn that legal jargon because you're going to have to weigh in on maybe some legal issues. Or you come over to something that is more marketing or advertising, you know, ah, I never really studied that, I didn't like it, but guess what? The team is involved in marketing and advertising. So spend a little time learning, ask a few questions, or at least dig a little bit on your own so you raise your level in areas where maybe you're not so comfortable. Now it is a better team, it's more solid, and one person doesn't have to carry the whole weight like an IT guy. Eventually they have to be called in because it's so serious. But why should you limit yourself and keep over on to this side and not really build with a team building effort for yourself as well as the others? Right. Take advantage of that opportunity to increase your own skills. Right. Jessica, you're really good with communications. So I'd like to get your input on the communication aspect and how important good communications are and what are some of your your tips and advice for building good communication skills. I love that. So thank you, uh, Melani. I would start with continuing the continuing the thought that Jim was just sharing in the sense that it is really important to be confident in understanding what each team member is so that we can back each other up. At that same point in time, also be comfortable going, I really don't like to do that, but I'm going to learn it because I'm going to back that up for you, if and only if you're not around and I need to be able to do that. But I'm not going to know it all and I'm not going to know it like you because that's why you're here. Honor the gifts of each of those uh, of those people. So I love what Jim was saying and I, I always turn it to, don't forget, put yourself first a little bit <laughs> because that also starts in communication, I would say. And when we think about communication, um, I tend to be a little direct. People, I, I find out, I have found out over the years that people um, tend to not, or be surprised when some things come out of my mouth, and I'm like, well, I'm not really good at sugarcoating things. I don't really like beating around the bush, because typically the bush I'm beating around is not the one everybody else is hanging out at, so I just quit trying. <laughs> and it's nice to be able to be soft. It's nice to be able to honor and respect everybody on the team, and still be able to say what needs to be said with integrity. One of the things that I love about collaborations, like what is happening in Infusion Principle with um, Nora Whalen and Phil Boyer, or what happens in the Those Four Girls community with all of the hostesses, the hosts the, uh, over there, 
we are so different and our knowledge is so vast and sometimes we say things that it's like really that's that's very interested and unexpected and the cool thing is that all of the differences the fact that we can receive and support and just accept people for who they are and know that they their personality and their communication was there now when things get tight or stuff is behind schedule or somebody gets sick or some unexpected life thing happens and emotions rise that's really where a deep breath and remembering why we're working together in the first place really can honor all the people that we choose to surround ourselves with. Great advice. I like the way that you and Jim build off of what each other are saying and that we're right there. We're, you a team. We're, we're going to be a team by the end of the show. Yeah, and that, uh, we already are. Yeah. Great example <laughs> right. of collaboration and team building right there. Yep. I think it's important to be able to take a critique positively as well without feeling you're being picked on because we all need to be able to take critiques. This is how we grow and this is how we improve our skills by hearing what could be done better the next time. Now, having I'd said like that, to from, I'd like to hear something from Jessica on this one point because you brought it up, you touched on it there, critique. And that's part of team building. That's part of self-image and everything else going on. But now here's one where, okay, I'm on a team. And there's one person, guy or gal, doesn't matter, who seems to think that their contribution and the way to be the best contributor is to find the things that need to be improved in everything, in everyone else. And so they come out with their list of improvements and nothing else. <laughs> and you go like, wow. Now, if it was my mother-in-law, I'd say it's just being she's negative. Okay. But a team member, you can't just come out and say that. You have to deal with it. And uh, don't you have anything positive to say about our project or ideas or anything? So how would the communicator in you, Jessica, say, we need to change the tone of our meeting instead of the one person just going, and this didn't get done, and that didn't get done, I like this, and I don't like that. Okay, so there's two things. My husband's company actually just brought somebody on and that's their whole job. So just know. <laughs> and she's a fabulous lady. She's really good at what she does. And she, her job is to, to think about improvements and know what everybody else in the marketplace is doing and how do you, you know, where are we not measuring up or where are we really good and some of those things. And, and when... When somebody gets like that, one of the things that I, I ask, I will say, you know, it is great that you see all the improvements here that we can do. Will you please give us a frame of reference so we know what we are excelling at in the marketplace, in this project, and where we're trying to go with it, so we have a balance of what we're trying to do and where we're trying to go and that we're actually succeeding in maintaining our differentiation. We are excelling in positioning ourselves and telling our story correctly so that when we hear all of these wonderful improvements we know we're solidifying and growing and strengthening this place. Yeah, How's I had a manager. I had a, that was good. That was better than I thought of. But the <laughs> I had a I had a manager, a sales manager, who just loved this approach. And we go into the sales meeting together, and I would be you know talking with the client, the customer, and we come out. And we're driving away in the car. I'm the one driving, and he's sitting there going, "Well, Jim, you were very organized. Enough with the positive comments, because now comes the hour long what you didn't do right. And, and you can't just, get away. It was a pattern. Well, no, I mean he's. You were we're in the driving car. in the car for an hour to the next client. What are you going to do? You have to say, hey, can I leave you out here? Uh, you go buy gas and leave him there? No, you can't do that. But, yes, it's this thing where if you're on a team and you're trying to build the team, you're going to go, but I can't tear it down either. Exactly. And and that would actually be something that's, well, thank you for the one great thing. And can we table some of this, or may I receive it, and then please don't expect to have a conversation about it today. I would like to be able to go back because then what I would do if I'm closed in, I just need to walk away and I need to process because then I will find a lot of amazing positive things to bring back and sometimes that will shift a personality too. It's harder when it's a manager and it's a choice when it's a collaboration. 
Okay. Between, you know, I would say, especially between entrepreneurs or small businesses. Now, in cross-functional teams in an organization, you don't get to choose who you talk to. And so um, in those situations, I see no problem. When people come together, everybody has a strength. What role can they play? I would like to be the scribe and make sure everybody has the notes. I would like to make sure that we have an, who's, who's in charge of the agenda and what do we need to talk about today. Um, and make sure somebody, you know, whoever is, is following those tasks also has something positive to bring because it is important to uplift. And it's hard when one person has to carry the weight of saying no or um, what needs to be improved or trying to be so helpful that you come across in a negative manner. <sighs> well, I think there's a lot to be said for the skill set in good critiquing, too. And like you both we're saying you started off with a positive. That's really important. What The best manager I ever had at a, at a job taught me that you couch it. You, you start with a positive. What did you do right? Then you say the thing that needs improvement, and then you end it with another positive, which could be either a suggestion for how to improvement, or if you don't have that suggestion, then, then asking, Let's brainstorm. What are some ways that we can think of improving it now, showing that you have an interest with that person in helping to improve it, or that you have confidence in that person that they can improve it, and you're just kind of coaching them to bring it out of themselves. What can you do to improve it? So it's doing it sandwich style. John, we are right about at 15 minutes till 10 o'clock, so Let's get to you one more time. Is there anything that you'd like to add on the team building and communication skills end of things? And get you any commercials for your upcoming HOAs or anything out at this time too because we're going to start doing our wind downs. Um, simply put, when we listen, we learn. Listening's the communication skill we use the most and we teach it the least. I think when you can sit back and listen to someone else, you start to get a full flavor of what's going on in that collaboration. Any collaboration to me is like sitting down at a restaurant and looking at a menu. There's all kinds of different things on it because there's all kinds of different ingredients. So you could do the same hangout tomorrow morning, say, and have three different people on it, and it could go in a completely different direction because the ingredients are different. I think when we listen, we learn. That's one of the things I'm excited about, especially some of the issues you guys talked about. My future three hangouts are going to have people on. Milani's going to be on with me next Thursday night to talk about her view of personal branding. Um, I talked a little bit last night about what you need to do as a job seeker, as a coach, as a consultant, when you approach somebody and try to sell your personal brand, my lifelong belief is that the only thing you have to sell is yourself. So that's kind of the direction I'm going in with about a million and a half other things. And thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Come back anytime. I like TGIF to be an open sort of networking type of hangout and welcome anybody who would like to join in anytime. Jessica, what are your last closing thoughts, if any? And if you have anything upcoming that you would like to promote, this is a great time to do it. I would say that this is a, a fabulous conversation, and I think we could talk about this for like days and days and days. <laughs> bring, bring the popcorn, get the whatever caffeinated drink you need so we could just stay up. Oh, wait, and we probably should throw some veggies in there too. Okay. Our question of the day for Infusion Principle was about popcorn, so it's at the top of my mind right now, even though for me it's only a quarter to ten in the morning. <laughs> um, I very much uh, love the fact that each person that comes to a team or a collaboration typically has a choice to do so. And even if they don't have a choice, there's a choice in how they show up and there's a choice in how they choose to contribute so that they can um, fill a role that needs to be filled so that they can grow in an area that they want to grow and overall so that they can stay energized and really help a project move forward. And that's 
one of the best benefits that I've seen out of the online collaborations that I have, and in-person collaborations that I have worked on over the years. Uh, I would say make sure and catch Women in Business today. It is on Mondays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. The Jess and Scott and You Show is on Tuesday nights at 7.15 p.m. Pacific Time, which would be 10.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And definitely stop by and take a look at Infusion Principle because that is up and coming and it's amazing. Christine Bowen, who is in the audience, sharing some conversation on the event page. She is part of our team. It's great to see you here. And we have, we have a great big team for that. And, and every single person that is part of that is, has been a tremendous help. And so thank you very much, Melani, for having me. It's wonderful to spend time with John and Jim and you. And I really am, I'm energized, and I'm going to walk away from this shining all day because of the sparkle that each one of you brings in your own voice and your contributions today. Awesome. Well, Jim, what can I say? How are you going to follow that up? Because that was beautiful, Jess. Thank you. <laughs> right. I'm just going to, I wrote it down. I'm going to read it back in case, yes, I'm going to verbatim. Uh, no, I'm going to say one thing about Jessica. I have to give her, a, a, she planned well ahead in her life. Because in the tradition of Dudley do right, she chose Jessica do well, and that just is such a good way of going through life. And you know that, unfortunately, if she gets divorced, she may lose that part. I would keep that part. Um, <laughs> the the catch is that when you come into the team building and you say, "I've got a great idea," no one else may think it's a great idea. So you have to have your self confidence. And what I like is doing these hangouts like we've known each other, Milani, for over a year. And the point gets to be that we practiced and practiced. And team, like I said in the beginning, teamwork is practice. And you're going to make those mistakes. You're going to have that meeting where you go, boy, I don't think I did that well. Or I think I had the best idea ever, but no one else thinks so. What's wrong with this situation? And that's part of learning and learning and saying, well, I got to really try and make this work. So I appreciate the opportunity to come in and, and interact with John and well, everybody because it, it kind of like stimulates those thoughts that you just never quite think about. It close maybe, but then life gets busy, the phone rings, and now we get to get into this hangout and really concentrate, but only for an hour. That really is kind of a shame because this could be a much longer discussion. So I appreciate you inviting me in, and Jim, hopefully there'll be another time. Before you leave, Jim, I actually wanted to hear a little bit about JARS. Can you tell us a little bit about oh, JARS? J-A-R-S is an acronym, and I came up with my own version is Jim Alt is really smart, but I don't <laughs> think the other team members think of it that way. It just, the guy woke up, the guy who pulled it together, a uh, friend of mine, Storm Hightower, and he pulled this slide together, and he just thought of it one night. So it's Project JARS. And what we're trying to do with this, as it gets going, we're going to try and keep, make room for online conferences for people that are doing startups and bootstrapping. It can be technology startups, or it can be you know, indie bands trying to get started, or other kinds of people. And we've been trying to communicate with a lot of variety as well as people that really have something to offer. In other words, they want to put it out there and get the attention, but they got something behind it. It's not just this crazy idea. And so hopefully we're in October, November, going to be starting some online. Um, it's projectjars.com. You can find out all the details there. But it should be interesting because, again, you're going to meet people that are really trying to make their mark, the 20-somethings that are brilliant and the 30-somethings that have got experience and are bringing it and boy their energy is kind of like wow good to listen to them because they're ready for the world and that's a lot of fun. So JARS is, is what you're saying I think is it's kind of going to facilitate collaborations between people who have things that they don't right. know the, that they can Right. The, the conference is supposed to bring the people with the ideas and the energy and the project team started with people that have the money to really make something happen and so they've got to somehow blend and a lot of startups don't have enough budget to go somewhere to a conference or to give a paper we're going to try and give them a platform to say let's talk and we'll match you up with people that can help you go to the next step 
And besides Jim Alt is really smart, what does J-A-R-S stand for? No one knows. I, since oh. I, as a team member, I volunteered <laughs> to come up with what it means, and until they come up with something else, that's my, ver my version stands. <laughs> that's my contribution at okay. the moment. Awesome. Well, I want to say thank you so much to Jessica Duell, Jim Alt, and John, help me out. How do you pronounce your last name? Very carefully. Um, Jerkowitz. Jerkowitz? Okay. Uh -huh. Jerkowitz. So I want to say thank you to all three of my guests today. They were really awesome. Jessica has such a great command of communication skills and sharing all her insights with us was fabulous. Jim, you are such a great observer of people. And your observations are really very astute, and you bring those to the table in addition to all your techie skills. I think that's one of your greatest gifts to the rest of us. And I have this book. You have a book? Yeah, that's where I get all my stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jim's wow Factor at gmail.com, okay. And yes, John, well, I am really looking forward to being on your HOA next Thursday night and talking about branding and personal branding and professional branding. It's going to be a blast. Thank you all so much for coming with uh, me today on the journey on TGIF. The next TGIF is going to be on Friday, August 1st, and the topic is going to be we have all these wonderful social tools, and we always talk about using them for outreach but I'm going to talk about using them for internal organization and efficiency because I've lately been using them a lot for keeping my own self organized and getting my own workflow under wraps. For, exist, for example, Christine L. Bowen is in the comments here in the event listing talking about her new HOA show which is called, where is that? Let's see. Oh, Christine. CLB Live. Live, CLB yeah. Live. Uh, and you can find that at christinelbowen.com forward slash CLB Live. Her show, I know, is going to be great because I have been connected to her in a few hangouts, and she's just awesome. So, but it's going to be on a Saturday when I usually try to stay offline and take a day off just to myself and unplug. But I created a community on Google Plus that's private. I'm the only member of it. One of my threads in that community is HOAs I want to watch. And I share all the event listings of HOAs that I want to catch up on into that community. So I have them all listed in a library. It's my own personal viewing library. And I find that to be a lot more effective than trying to go out and search and look for the ones that I'm trying to watch. So I thought, wow, what a great topic. I'm going to talk about all these things that I've been doing lately to organize my own self using social media tools. And if any of you out there are doing the same, if you're a power user of communities or groups on Facebook or anything else that you're using to keep your own internal workings organized, Please do contact me. We'd love to have you on and hear what you're doing and learn from you. Thanks very much. Again, that will be Friday, August 1st at 9 a.m. PST. Thanks, everybody. Say bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye.